Welcome to the Zon video. It has been known from time immemorial that the Imperial system is garbage. Today, most of the world uses the glorious metric system, but these three shall remain using the worst system of measurement ever, the Imperial system. Primarily, it's not so much of a system as a collection of ways to measure things. Systems are designed and have consistency, neither of which is true with the imperial measures. The metric system makes conversions a lot easier as there are perfect points where one conversion leads to the next. All you have to remember is this small little graph and you are all good. As an example of the design of the inner workings of the metric system, for water is one milliliter of water is equivalent to one gram, which is also one centimeter cubed. This makes estimating things like how many liters of water should I buy if my truck has a maximum payload of 1000 kg very easy. This is more satisfying than watching this for math nerds though. In metric, no one needs a gallons, quarts, pints converter as you can all do that in your head pretty easily. In the metric system, everything is set on prefixes. Starting at the bottom is picto, nano, micro, milli, centi, and deci, and the base unit. Then there is deca, hecto, kilo, mega, giga, and finally tera. These can easily be converted from one to the other with the simple move of a digit. This is 100 centimeters, which is exactly a meter, and here is a kilometer, which is 1000 meters, which is 100,000 centimeters. Very easy and very simple, unlike Imperial. That is because Imperial also has many ambiguous names for Imperial measurements. Mile can be state, survey or nautical, depending on context. Ounce can be fluid or solid, depending on context. It gets worse with more esoteric measurements. For example, a barrel has the following possible context. UK wine, UK beer, UK non-wine slash beer, US dry, US liquid, US petroleum. So a barrel of flour is not the same as a barrel of wine or a barrel of petroleum, as you cannot easily convert them into more common units without memorizing complex formulas. This complicates transportation across the globe. Sure, you want to be different from the rest of the world, but other than Independence Day, no one cares about national unity. They just want to get the job done. Imagine the havoc it would cause to have each state have their own standard of measurement. A California pound is half the weight of a New York pound, and you now want to move to Texas, where they weigh stuff in Toyota Corollas. Good luck trying to convert those 747s they use in Washington to Corollas in Texas. And now you're trying to find the distance between Seattle and Dallas in football fields. Although this is an exaggerated example, but it's quite accurate in explaining the problem with the imperial system. The problem with these units is they cause many incidents. One of them is Air Canada Flight 143. This was a routine flight between Montreal and Edmonton. At that time, Canada's aviation sector was going from Imperial to Metric. This caused lots of confusion as at the time, the new 767s were calibrated for the metric units like kilograms and liters, instead of the Imperial units like gallons and pounds. All the other aircraft in Canada's fleet were still using Imperial units. For the trip to Edmonton, the pilot calculated they would need 22,000 kilograms of jet fuel. A float stick check indicated that there were 7,682 liters already in the tanks. To calculate how much fuel was needed to be added, the crew needed to convert volume in liters to mass in kilograms. Subtract that figure by 22,300, then convert the rest back into volume. To those who do not know, in the past when everyone believed that the earth was round and when hideous video games did not exist, there was a flight engineer, or this guy, who would normally look over these complex calculations. But the brand new 767 and other modern planes like it use advanced computers to do the flight engineer's work. So the flight engineer's job is gone. Kind of like mine, but which never really existed in the first place. Here is how the crew should have done the calculations. I will try to make it as easy as possible. So you take 7,682 liters, 
multiply by 0 0.8 kilograms, which is 6,169 kilograms of mass of fuel already on board. Then you take that number and subtract it from 22,300 kilograms, which equals 16,131 kilograms for the mass of the additional fuel required. Or if you want to find the volume of the additional fuel required, then what you could do is take that number divide it by 0 0.8 kg, then that would be 20,088 liters of volume of additional fuel required. But this is how the ground crew actually did the calculations. You take 7,682 liters, multiply that by 1.77, which is 13,500 and 97 pounds. Because of this incorrect conversion factor, this quantity was interpreted as 13,597 kilograms already on board. Then you take that number and you subtract it from 22,300 kilograms, which is 8,703 kilograms of the mass of additional fuel required. Then you take that number and then you divide it from 1.77 pounds, which is 4,917 liters. Because of the incorrect conversion factor, this quantity was interpreted as 4,917 liters. This led to them having less fuel and then crashing in Gibney, Manitoba, which is 81 kilometers from Winnipeg. Luckily, all on board survived and there were, there were 10 minor injuries during evacuation. Flame continued to serve for Air Canada till it retired in 2008. This also led to NASA missing a $125 million orbiter. This was the Mars Climate Orbiter as it was the first orbiter to study the Martian atmosphere in depth and to take photos from above, like this avalanche and this dead Martian. Wait a second, what was that last one again? Oh, just a weird slope. To save weight and cost because sending to Mars is ridiculously expensive, so NASA had to keep the orbiter small, and that is why they only put one solar panel on that thing. The problem was, this caused the orbiter to rotate and spin. To correct this, they fired up the hydrogen thrusters for the rover. The maneuvers were recorded on a file on Lockheed Martin's computers. Also in Lockheed's contract, they said that they will totally use the almighty metric system. This would mean they would use the newtons of force per second. The problem was that they used pounds of force per second. This caused some miscalculations by a factor of 4.45, which inevitably led to the orbiter's grave as it burned up upon entry of the Martian atmosphere. The problem was that the launch industry was to blame, as they did not change to the metric system. NASA did not only just lose a $125 million orbiter, but it also lost valuable information which postponed the launch of humans to Mars. By the way, which is whenever Elon gets his BFR, I mean Starship ready. I will never accept the name change. Apparently, I need to make this video longer, as it is good for watch time. So this makes me ask, why is the US still on the imperial system? There was a plan to switch over to the metric system, so to simplify things, a politician secretary named Thomas Jefferson sent a letter to France to ask them to send a kilogram. The reason is, if America wanted to convert to the metric system, they needed to know how much a kilogram is. Thomas Jefferson, who was the secretary of state, was going to decide if he liked how the kilogram felt, I guess. Unfortunately, the ship that was going to send the kilogram was blown south and got raided by pirates. Thomas could not get the US to move onto the metric system because he needed to know how much a kilogram was. The US will get its chance to change the metric system once again in 1975 when Congress passed the act to get people to switch to the metric system. Here is what it says to declare a national policy of coordinating the increasing use of the metric system in the United States and to establish a United States metric board to coordinate the voluntary conversion to the metric system. Also, the bill was met by hard opposition as one Republican who said, forcing the American people to switch goes against our democratic principle. To what I say, seriously, it's just a better way of measurement and will not cause massive conversion errors like the NASA orbiter and the Air Canada flight and many other errors people face while doing day-to-day -day activities. This is why this highway is the only fully metric highway in America, because the rest of America did not, then forgot to convert. Wait a second. 
coordinate the voluntary conversion to the metric system. Turns out that there were no penalties for switching as it was voluntary, so people just measured in whatever they wanted. If you are one of the few that survived till the end of this video, then congratulations and please subscribe, it helps to grow this channel, and you get to know a little bit more about the world after each video. Also, if you want, you can follow me on Twitter at TheJournal12. Thanks for watching this video, and see you in the next one.